What's up, spectators? Welcome back to the episode of Professor Layton and the Last Spectre. Last time we found out the identity of the... Mm, you think it's the Spectre, but it isn't. It's actually like an old-looking, adorable dinosaur named Lucia. But apparently Lucia's been fighting the real Spectre, and we don't know who that is yet. Fire at will! Jakes, what is this? <laughs> oh, this is so like when Team Rocket tried to capture Dragonite. Contra Spectre. Turns out he was just a big old ugly dinosaur. <laughs> Third eye, Jakes, triumphs again. And this here is the witch what was controlling it. Two birds with one stone. Peace is restored. And everyone lived happily ever after! <laughs> Chief Shakes, the real Spectre is not this creature. You shut your trap, Lighten! You're just lucky I don't throw you back behind bars. You hear? Calm down for a moment. What do you mean, calm down? Uh... She'll be fine. I give you my word on that, Luke. Remember, you can only help Ariana if you keep a clear mind. A clear mind? Hmm. What are you planning? Get help from Tony. What's he gonna do? They took my sister! They took Ariana and Lucia! Tony, we'll help her, I promise. You're gonna take on the police? Like you did just now? We'll get some help, and trust me, we'll save your sister. No one will help you. Everyone in this town hates us. I don't believe that's true, Tony. Take this note to a boy named Crow in the black market. He'll help. Tony, you got to believe us. You really think you could save my sister and Lucia? Yes, I know we can, but we're going to need your help to do so. I just need to deliver this note. Okay, but how is this going to help? I always keep my promises, Tony. Please, just trust me. So wait, if Lucia isn't the Spectre, then... The real Spectre is something that resembles Lucia, but isn't Lucia. And Lucia's trying to keep the Spectre from what it desires. Their ongoing battle is what destroyed those buildings in town. Ariana was afraid of Lucia w uh, was afraid Lucia would be hurt in those fights, and so she played the flute from here. Of course. So was Ariana's flute actually the Spectre's flute? I don't know. We can't be certain of that. But playing it seemed to calm Lucia. You said that Lucia was fighting the real Spectre. That's right. Professor, who or what is the real Spectre then? I could tell you, but. I'd rather show you. Let's see what our little trap yields us. The trap that the crow and black ravens helped you with. The very same. Now let's go. I know that people call Dariana a witch, but they have no reason to harbor ill feelings for her. We need to prove to the town that Jakes is wrong about this. We need to find some evidence that will convince the townspeople. Correct. This trap will help us do that and save Ariana as well. Should we head to the side of the last attack? Okay. Oh, let's go! Quickly! Gotta figure out what's going on! Faster! Damn it, Bucky! Can't you lend me a bicycle or something? Screw your boats! What are you doing here? There was a little boy who came rushing out of Bard Manor just now. What's going on? He said he wanted to talk with Crow, so I told him to check the market. Speaking of Crow... We have a message from him. That's why we were waiting for you. He said he looked into what you asked about. He wrote down all the information. Thank you, I think we'll be able to figure out the Spectre's next destination now. Professor Layton, please let me handle this puzzle. All right, Luke. Trap 
Traps were set at every intersection in town. That night, every time the specter passed an intersection, that spot was marked with an X. Knowing that the specter never hits the same area twice, Luke had a revelation. I've got it! I know which way the specter went! Oh! Which way A to H does Luke think the specter went? Circle the letter. Which way A to H? A to H? Does Luke think the specter went? Which way? I'm a little bit confused. How did this work? Oh, I select a letter, okay. Which way A to H does Luke think the specter went? Uh, well, if it starts in the center... Uh, I guess I'll just choose one of these and just sort of like... Follow along? That's probably the best way. Uh. Wait, no, 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 don't get rid of my. No, don't do that. H. I think it went to H. I think this is right. It is not H. Let me take another look. Let's try this again. Okay. Memo. Memo. Okay, so we'll start here, go down one, and then go around in a circle, trying to cover all the spots just once. Going around and around, and we're up here. Hmm. It could be E. It could have done sort of like a this thing. Could be E. Let's try with E. this ah that was it that's the way it was e now we know which way the specter went what lies in that direction the only thing over there is the old factory i think we need to have a look luke can you take us there yes sir Aha! Okay. Go to the factory, alright. Bucky, I need your help! Let's go, Bucky! I'm going south, Bucky! Shut up about the North Pier! I don't care about the North Pier, I wanna go south! Two... Yes, we gotta go to one. That's the closest. Okay. And then we just go east. Perfect. Nope, shut up. I don't care about you, old man. We got shit to do. I don't care about all of you. Shut up. Who's this guy? This is the old factory. I guess they used to make steam cars here a long time ago. How rare to have a factory located in a town with so much clean water and lovely greenery. They closed the factory because it was polluting the water. Oh. Sebastian? I got laid off from the factory. Don't remember how long ago. Can't remember the past. Got no future. Used to produce steam cars here. But they shut it down. Said it was polluting things. Guess that's good. The factory is supposedly empty, but someone is going... Someone is going... Oh, someone's going in there. Okay. I spend a lot of time just looking around here. Wait. Who's inside the factory? I haven't seen him, not exactly. But those machines in there sure aren't running themselves. Is there another way in besides the front gate? Sure, there's the back entrance we used to sneak into all the time whenever we were late. We need to get inside. Can you tell us where the back entrance is? What do you take me for? Look how few puzzles you've solved. Go solve some more puzzles and then we'll talk. If you solve some more if you solve more than 80 puzzles, I'll show you. 80. To do 20 more puzzles! Oh my god! Is that what I'm gonna do? Just for a whole video, do 20 more puzzles! Oh my lord! Okay, I guess I'll do that. I guess that I had that coming. I was ignoring everybody. Hello again, Bucky. Fancy seeing you here. Your pal Bucky's a man about town, coming and going in this fabulous, fantastic boats. These. Oh, and my stylus! Got it. Trying to get a boat down one of these narrow canals would be impossible, Bucky. 
The word impossible is not in Bucky's dictionary, and it shouldn't be in yours either. If you want to ride, Bucky has some great boats here. Nope, I don't want to do that. Mr. Bard shut down this factory because he said the pollution made his daughter's illness worse. It just sits here now, an empty coop. I heard Mayor Triton has an emotional attachment to the place. It's too bad. A lot of talented folks work there. Go! Fucking crazy! I'm a crazy bird man! Why, if it is a little Luke, what's the matter there, son? How about a puzzle from old Thomas to turn that frown upside down? 80 puzzles, dear lord. 55! The aim is to remove all the silver marbles, marbles from the board except for one. Which one? You can jump a marble horizontally or vertically over an adjacent marble and into an empty space to remove the jumble, jumped over marble from the board. You can move or jump over any marble except those marked with an X. Move marbles by jumping over adjacent marbles either vertically or horizontally. When you touch a marble, your possible moves will be highlighted in pink. If you jump over a marble, it would disappear. There are some marbles that can't be moved or jumped. Can't be moved or jumped? How do you leave only... How do you leave... Mmm, okay, I see. I see. Okay. I'm sure there is a certain order to this. Just a matter of finding out what it is. Mm-hmm. Aha. Uh -huh. Da-da-da. Not really following any pattern at the moment, just sort of going at it. Uh-oh. Uh, hold on here. I did it! Ha-ha-ha! think this is right? Fifty-five! <laughs> was wasn't so hard. Yahoo-hoo-hoo! Remarka Marble. Did you find it difficult? The trick to this puzzle is to work toward the center of the board. I did not find it difficult. It was easy as sh Shiza. Oh, I saw Clark the other day. First time in a long while. Did you talk to him? Afraid not. He was talking to Chief Jakes about the Spectre. I didn't want to be rude. Oh. It must be hard for you, what with your mother on holiday and Clark working around the clock. But we all have times like those. Shit up. Things will be back to normal before you know it. Thank you, Thomas. All right, let's keep wandering around. Gotta find more puzzles. A lot. I mean, we can get to... Yeah, I guess we should do all the ones the cat has. Because there are a lot we haven't done yet. Taste test. There are four different types of buns in this assortment of 12. Four different types, okay. There are more cream buns than butter buns, fewer chocolate buns than jam buns, fewer jam buns than cream buns. If buns of the same type always have the same shape, what is the fewest number of buns you'd have to taste to determine which shape are each type? Whoa, you are really confusing the crap out of me with what you're saying right now, what? What are you saying? Hold on. Buns of the same type always have the same shape, Fewest number of buns you'd have to taste. Okay, hmm. So, ah, oh, this is a tricky one. Four different types. Um, assortment of 12 total. 12 total buns, okay. Uh, more cream than butter. Mm, jam, fewer jam than cream. So it's... The order of buns is cream, cream, there are more cream than butter, is greater than butter, fewer chocolate than jam, fewer chocolate, so jam has more than chocolate, and fewer jam than cream. Cream is greater than jam. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. So the only issue is we don't know if there's more jam than butter. I feel like the answer is three. I don't have a good reason why. I kind of want to try three. 
This took some creative thinking. Yeah, I mean, that was a shot in the dark. What could have gone wrong here? Try figuring out which buns are in the biggest group on the table. Try again, yes. Well, that would be, uh... Hmm. Look at the memo again. Chocolate greater than butter. Or cream. Cream higher than jam. Jam, which is higher than chocolate. So... There are 12. This is a tricky one. Is it? <sighs> I guess... I guess if you do the shape of B, which is... What is B again? B is, uh... Not that it matters. Butter. I guess if you knew how many butters there were, you could determine how many C's there are, which would tell you J and C-H-O? I think that's the one you'll in... Hmm. Uh, I, hmm, actually, I guess if you do how many there were of either chocolate or jam, you would know? Uh, I feel like it's either one or two. I don't know which ones. I'm gonna try two, and then I'm gonna try one. Some puzzles must be met directly. Okay, it's not two. It appears as though I've missed something. I suppose if you try to, um, if you try one bun, that may give you, that would give you, um, it's a tricky one. A challenging puzzle, to be sure. Okay, it is one. Let's see what I explanation the they have. I love a good solution. You only need to taste one. From the puzzle, you know the cream buns and the chocolate buns are the most numerous and the fewest, respectively. True. So you can skip the largest and smallest on the table. That leaves only the two, which is butter and, what was it, jam? No, chocolate? No, jam. Ah, okay. Oh, wow, we've got so many to do. Black and white, black and white cats. Well, only way to do it is just do them. Just gotta do them. You want to display your impressive collection of black and white cat paperweights on this 4x4 grid. Okay. You must fill every space and no row or column can have more than two same colored cats next to each other. No row or column. Okay. Six cats currently on the grid must remain where they are. Okay. Okay. Let's try it then. Oh, wait a minute. Every spot needs to be the same, but it can't be white or black. Right? No row or column can have more than two next to each other. Ah! Okay, so it's like this. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Next to each other. So this could, in fact, be white. Because there's, only, there's never more than two adjacent. Which could also mean this could be white? This is very confusing. Um, okay. Well, I'm gonna go with this train of thought for now, and let's see what else we can do. So, this- this could be white. Wait a minute, hold on, what happens if I do this? See, this clearly can't, because... One of these. Uh... But everywhere else is actually fine! Right? Let me see. No row or column... Can have... More than two same colored cats next to each other. Oh, no, no, n no, that's not it at all. So in that case, this would be like one, two, three, probably. Ah. This is... This is a... Very tricky one. What about this? I don't know if this is right, but... Hmm. This took some creative thinking. No. What could have gone wrong here? I 
Just wish it made a bit more sense. Let me try getting a hint and see what it says. Anytime you spot two adjacent cats of the same color, any space next to them in that row or column will need to be filled with a cat of the opposite color. Any space next to them in that row or column. Okay. Concentrate on the placement of the white cats. You can only place a total of four cat paperweights in any single row or column. Once you figure out where the white cats go, you can pretty much fill... Okay. Alright. So let's restart this. So you're saying if this was white, this has to be black? I don't know about this. I don't know. A challenging puzzle, to be sure. Yeah, that's not it. It appears as though I've missed something. Okay, let's think. So you want me to do the white ones first? Restart, okay. So, a white can be next to a white. It's good because it's next to a black. Uh, but if it's a white and a white, this would need to be black then, yes? Okay. So the next one, it's okay to have a white, but that means this bottom one has to be black. Okay. Uh, moving right from the second row, it's white and black. We haven't had any adjacent ones yet. But if this is black, then both of these have to be white, yes? But does that also mean... Hmm, okay... Uh... Black, black... Uh, white... Bottom has white, white... So this could be white, which means black, black has to be surrounded in blacks if it's adjacent. This took some creative thinking. Hmm, see? I can kind of get what they were saying, answer. but... That didn't feel like a clean understanding of what I had to do. There was no rule about having an uneven number of black cats and white cats. Okay, I guess. Hmm. All right. Oh, these are all 35. Give me some 25s. Someone left a ton of books on the table. And now these two librarians have the unpleasant task of shelving them all again. The librarians are trying to count all the books, but the stack's so high that neither one can see them- Oh! Hmm. Okay... Shelving them all. How many books are on the table? Okay... Okay... So! Ah! And, okay, okay, all right, all right. So these are the top of the books. Top of every shelf, that's what that is. So erase that. So you can see that this one is that one. So this has four. We can't see, uh, we can't see how many are in the middle. Mm, but the top person can kind of see, which would make this two. They can also see, let's see, the orange book has three. One, two, three, four, five. This has five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, the bottom one can also corroborate, corroborates that being five. And this one is two. So, five, eight, ten, fourteen, six. Yeah, sixteen. So, let's put in sixteen. A challenging puzzle, to be sure. Okay, that was good. I like that. A See, a nice, clear no answer. We had, we had a clear way to solve it. Pretty good. There are sixteen books in total. Good eye. Man, this is just back-to-back -back puzzles. That's what this video is gonna be, by the way. Odds are, if I'm luck, oh my god, a 50 points. If I'm lucky, I can get as, m as much of them done in this one video as possible. This is gonna be way longer than normal. A single light hangs from a beam above the floor of this dilapidated warehouse. Okay, there are two posts. Okay, there are two posts, both of which are a foot tall. Okay, I see them on there, okay. Separated by a distance of 15 feet. 
the light casts a three foot long shadow from the left post and a two foot long shadow from the right post. What? Oh, I see, okay. Figure out how high the light is hanging above the floor. Oh no, this is stuff I would have done so good before when I was actually decent at geometry. So this is X, I suppose. Uh, 15 feet. Hmm. Does that mean this is 14 feet long if the shadow is like that? Is it? No, wait, no, 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 no. It's not like that at all. Um, it is... 8 and 7, because 8 and 7 make 15 feet. So, more than likely, that's how it's broken up. 1 feet tall. Oh, but these are 1 feet tall, how does that tie into things? 1, 1... Or is the... Oh, dear. Okay. I'm trying to think if the height of the of the um if the thing matters, but I, I don't think it does. Hold on a minute. I'm gonna need a hint here. Choose one of the posts and visualize a large triangle formed between the light and the spot on the floor directly under the light. Okay. A smaller triangle formed between the top of the post and the bottom of the post. Huh? The light, floor, farthest point. Top of the post, bottom of the post, and the tip of the shadow. So you're saying... Oop, memo. You're saying this, this, and this is a triangle, while this... This... This is a triangle? So this is two by one. One. I'm pretty sure this is still eight. 8 by X. Okay. Hmm. I'm not quite sure. I should have left the... I need another hint here. Hold on. Let's say the height of the light equals X. And the distance on the floor between the light and the post on the left equals Y. The shadow cast by the post on the left extends three feet. Therefore, three X equals Y plus three. So they were going beyond up to here. Three X plus Y equals three. Okay. Hmm. Shadow on the, okay. So I guess we should apply the same principle to the one on the right. Which is, um... Uh... Boy. Hmm... So they were treating this like Y, right? X, Y... 3... I'll handle this one, Professor. You can't prove I looked that up! I did it, Professor. It just popped into my brain. I was like, yeah, yep, that's exactly how I came up with it, this little house. Yep, mm-hmm. Yeah, I visualized all that. So easy. Easiest thing I've ever done. Oh, yeah. One by three ratio. One by two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Too easy. I am so smart. Moving on. Pretend that didn't happen. Pretend that whole puzzle never happened. You have the job of cleaning a king's room in his palace. This king is quite meticulous and has declared that his room be cleaned in a very specific way. There are numbers written on some of the floor tiles that show the order in which the tiles should be cleaned. 
starting from tile 1 and proceeding from tile to adjacent tile in the correct order, you can find a way to clean all the tiles without repeating any. To avoid dirtying the newly cleaned floors, the last tile you clean must be next to the door. What door? That huge arcway? When you touch a tile, it's given a number. Oh, it is given a number. Oh, start from the tile marked with number one. Go over each tile in order to create a path of sequential numbers with the numbers already marked on the board. I think I get what they're saying? So it's kind of like... Two, three, four, five, six. Uh... Where's the... Isn't... Isn't this the door? Right here? I don't know. I guess that's the door. But then I, I've already... I can't come back here. Right? I don't understand. Seven... Nine, ten, eleven, twelve... Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve... Thirteen... Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen... No, that doesn't make sense. Okay... Hold on, is that the door? Is that- is that thing at the bottom of the door? I don't know. I- Uh... I don't know where the door is. Okay, so I'm gonna assume... That this tile- that all of these tiles are adjacent to the door. They really should have drawn this, but I don't know. It's just kind of confusing. So, if that's the case, if we can end on that one, then I don't have to do this ridiculous looking thing right here. Restart. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now we've got six. Now I've got to go up to get twelve. How did we do that before? Last time we went up and then around. But we got to include... We need to make sure we end on the bottom left space. So we... Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven... Okay, so we can do this. Twelve. Thirty, four, fifty... Okay. Eighteen. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Just go right across. We can just mirror. 27, yeah. Just mirror. This took some creative thinking. Okay, I didn't like that no door part. Without an answer. Because it's not even like a door, it's just like a huge hallway. I, I guess maybe that's just me. That's probably just me. I'm finding little things to nitpick about. And look at that! Cleaning the room in this pattern forms the Chinese character for the word king. Really? It seems that the king is keen on languages, puzzles, and clean floors. Oh, how many do we need? 80? Oh my god! This is gonna be like a two hour long video. You are tasked with filling a reservoir by pumping water from a nearby lake using these four pumps. If you fill the reservoir using only one pump at a time, pump A would take three days, pump B would take six days, pump C would take ten days, pump D would take fifteen days. You decide to get one extra pump to make life easier. Which pump should you buy another of in order to get the job done exactly one day? Wait, hold, wait, what? Reservoir... Using these four pumps. I'm using these four, okay. Only one pump at a time? Okay. Oh, so I can buy one of the same one of the four that I'm currently using. Okay. Whoa, this is gonna take some crazy math. Uh... Three, six... At least they wrote it down for me, but... How... Oh, uh, in, uh, in exactly one day. So that's, uh, see, if it was like the fastest, obviously you would choose this one. But that'll probably result in it being done in less than half a day. Uh, you know, I don't really know the, what kind of math I need to be doing to solve this one. I'd rather not use up my coins. So I'm, since this is one in four chance, for some reason, if I were doing a multiple test question, and I'd probably go with these, just because. Total gut feeling. I'm gonna go with the six. A challenging puzzle, to be sure. Wrong. A little more thought is in order. Okay, let's try C. Some puzzles must be met directly. Wow, my gut feelings are always what crappy. What's going wrong here? Okay, as
as punishment for getting half of them wrong right off the bat, and not even trying to figure out how it works, why don't I, I deserve punishment? Let's see, how much of each reservoir can each pump fill in one day? Is there any convenient way to add these amounts together? Oh, yeah, I, I guess so, I mean... If we want it done in a day, this takes three days. I don't even know if this is the kind of thing... Six days, ten days, fifteen days... Ah, it's, uh, it's, uh... Puzzle can be solved by adding fractions together. If you dislike working with fractions, you can solve the problem by imagining the full reservoir as a certain... Oh, yeah, what am I talking about? Oh, hold on. Memo. So it'd be a third, a sixth, a tenth, a fifteenth, and you add them together. I should have spaced it out a little bit better. See, I wish I could press my hand against the panel, but otherwise I have to have this weird gap. It's hard to... One six, one ten, one fifteen equals... Gotta make the denominators common. Ugh. Uh, so the common denominator is 30, so, okay, all right. Really going back in time here. Never thought I'd be using this kind of math again. Mmm, so 10, 5, 3, 2, okay, add them up, which is 15, 18, 20 divided by 30, drop the zeros, 2 divide, uh, two over 3, so 2 thirds is going to be covered in a day, so we need 1 thirds, 1 thirds is A, it is A! Okay. This took some creative thinking. I guess if I had gotten the hints I a little bit, if I just solution. spent a few minutes to think about it, it would have made sense, and it would have been pretty simple to do. Instead, I lost my patience because I'm trying to do a million puzzles in a video. And I started guessing and I got all of them wrong. Okay. Honestly, that puzzle wasn't so bad. I kind of enjoyed it, actually. It's not safe to look directly at the sun, so people use lenses that can filter light, like the two pieces of glass below. These pieces of glass are good not only for looking at the sun, but also for seeing stars and getting cataracts. Can you use these two pieces of this to see a star? The bigger the better! Hold on a minute. What? What are you saying now? Look at the sun. Lenses filter. Good sun. Seeing stars. Oh, okay. Use these two pieces to see a star? The bigger the better? See a star? I can't- can I rotate- Oh man, I can rotate them? No! That makes things more confusing! See a star. How do I combine these two things to see a- Oh! Uh, oh, I feel like we're get- Uh, uh, no. The pointy part has to be at the bottom, right? Oh, I feel like it's almost a star. Uh, how- um... This is it? A challenging puzzle, to be sure. Ah! No puzzle is without an answer. Okay, overlapping the two pieces of glass just so- just so creates? Oh, just so creates a darker area in the shape of a star. Got it, okay. God, so many to do. <laughs> oh, another river crossing one. <clears throat> a couple and their three children, okay, need to cross this river by raft. The raft can hold up to two people, one person to row and one passenger. Okay, rowing is hard work, however. Both adults can row across twice, but they need to stop for rest between the two trips. The children can only row across the river one time. Can you help get everyone in the family to the other side? Okay. So... I guess if the parents can go twice... Hold on, I should really think about this before I do anything. Oh, well, we can, we can see how this works. So, here we go. Can we send the raft back alone? No, we can't. Can they raft alone? Oh, <gasps> they can't raft back alone! And you can't put the kid back- wait. Wait, why- Huh? The children can only row across the river one time. Why does it say go? Why does the de the parents say no? What?
I'm so confused right now. I don't understand what's going on. Ba ba. What a, what a. But the mother? I don't. What? How does that make sense? Um. Oh, you choose. Oh, I think I understand a little bit. Um. Wait a minute, though. How is this gonna come back? That did it. That that does it. Okay. This hmm. took some creative thinking. Okay, that worked I out. I love the thrill of a good solution. In addition to the solution shown here, there's an alternate method in which neither parent ever rides on the raft with a child. If you haven't solved it that way, it might be a fun extra challenge for you. No, I'm good. No, thank you. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. So many. Mm, who needs batteries or silly old springs? I have no want for those kinds of things. My top is my bottom, my bottom, my top. If you knock me over, I surely will stop. I'll wake me from sleep with a soft touch. I'll never be late, at least not by much. Can you guess what I am? Circle me. You're a clock. You're a clock. It doesn't even take a second to understand. Oh, but which kind of clock? There are two. Who needs batteries or silly old strings? I have no want for those kind of things. My top is my bottom. Oh, yeah, it's, it's the pocket watch. If you close it, the top is the bottom. If you knock me over, I surely will stop. Knock me over? Awake me from sleep with a soft touch. Oh, it's the sand dial? The sand dial doesn't need batteries. Or springs. It's the sand... sand dial. Or sand... yeah, sand... wait, sand timer? Sand clock? Sand timer? Sand dial? Eh. If you knock me over, I surely will stop. Yeah, cause you'll be on your side. Awake me from sleep with a soft touch. Uh, I'm gonna go with this one. A challenging puzzle, to be sure. Okay! A gentleman leaves no puzzle undone. Perfect! The answer is an hour, oh, hourglass is what they're called. Ah, oh, I'm so dumb. If objects could talk, an hourglass would be poet or a comedian. That's great timing, after all. Okay. Oh, oh, no, 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 We're, I wanna go in order. We're really crushing these things, though. It feels good when you're on a roll, get these quick ones out of the way. Some of those math ones, though, ugh. It says London, it says London, right there. Hey, Dad, I finished making the London. Oh, they already say it's London, damn it. The London one that you asked for. The London one. Thanks, son, it looks great, but you got one letter wrong. What? No way, that's... Oh, I guess I did, I'll fix it right away. So which letter did the son get wrong? Circle the incorrect letter. Um, L-O-N... D-O-N. It's the D. The D is, if you look at it upside down, you can see it's backwards letters, but the letters are still marked correctly. The D is flipped, though. Flip it upside back down. This is what I've come up with. It isn't D. Oh, I'm just not cut out for this. Oh. Interesting. What could be wrong? Oh, it's the N! It's the N's, isn't it? Because the N's are... Upside... What the? Reversed? The N's are reversed? Or... Hold on a minute, hold on. Restart, restart. Are all the letters backwards? Or flipped? If that's the case, it might even be the L. The L's the, the red herring. Maybe it's the L. It's either the L or the N. I think it's the L. How about this? Ah, that's so sneaky. That was it. The word has been carved onto a giant stamp, so it needs to look correct when stamped onto something. If you were to stamp it as shown in the puzzle, you'd see a big mistake. Gotcha. I feel like this video is getting to pretty pretty close to 50 minutes. All right. Two signs decorate the entrance to this unique hotel. One sign has a mirrored surface with several lines drawn across it. It also reflects the lines drawn on the sign directly opposite. When both sets of lines are combined, they form a three-digit number. 
That states the price of the deluxe suite. How much would a night in the deluxe suite run you? I wonder if I could do this without having to draw them together. Um, so they're on top of each other. Ah, it'd be pretty tough to do. There's no easy way to superimpose these, I don't think. What is the easiest way to do these? Um, I guess if I just try manually drawing it. Ba, 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 and then... Ba... 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 This is coming out really weird. This can't be what they wanted me to do. No, what the heck is this? That doesn't mean anything to me! What are you? You'll need to visualize the reflection in the mirror to solve this particular puzzle. Try using the memo function. I tried that! The first digit is five. Okay, the first digit is five. Memo. Let's try five. If I can at least get the f these symbols to look like a five, how does that even work? That's not a five. What? Uh, is it reversed? I don't really understand. Final digit is six. Uh... Two vertical lines, one horizontal line. On a calculator display, what has two vertical lines and one horizontal line? An eight? An eight? A five, eight, six? Is that it? This took some creative thinking. No, it isn't. It appears as though I've missed something. What? Ugh. So I got the middle number wrong. What has... Um, I'm trying to think. Is it a... A f four? No. Uh, um... Well... A f um, what was that last special hint again? Two... Uh, middle digit... Or two, wait. Two vertical lines and one horizontal line. Okay. Oh, it is a four! If you look here, you can kind of tell that it would be a four, right? I, I guess? So what is it again? Five, four, six? Some puzzles must be met directly. <laughs> hmm. No puzzle is without an answer. How do they draw it? They just... Ah, uh, I'm not that precise. I can't draw it like that. That's madness. Wait a minute. They mirrored the first one. Oh, that's what I was missing. The first painting had to be mirrored so it's flipped and then it makes five. Even then, I don't even know if I'd be able to draw it. It'd be so... Mm, eh, uh, not a fan of that one. Lanky lamp post. Do, 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 do. Can you work out the height of this lamp? Oh dear. Height of this lamp post just by looking at its shadow? The post next to the light has a height of one meter and casts a shadow of one and a half meters long. I really hate these ratio ones. One, 1. 1.5. And we have two and three. Mm. How does this work here? Uh. This is another one of those geometric puzzles that I just can't... Uh, if I just had a decent explanation for one of these, I could probably solve the others, but I'm kind of stuck. And... Uh, 
like, I can, I can see that they're trying to say that this one meter post and the shadow it's casting is 50% longer, and if this were a two meter post, it's casting a three foot shadow, so how long is this? And it's like, I'm almost there, but I just don't understand. So again, I looked it up, and of course the solution, I don't understand why, I don't know how they got four. I highly this doubt some creative their two-sentence solution explanation is going to help me out here. We'll see. I love the thrill of a good solution. The lamppost is four meters high. Wait, you're not even going to... Okay, you're not going to help me out. All right. They're like, oh, this is... Uh, if they, uh, No, we're not going to explain it. Okay. See? A, B, and C live in a row of houses that runs west to east. Their roofs are colored red, blue, and yellow. Unfortunately, I forgot who lives where, but I remember a few details. Uh, a lives west of B. The red roof is east of the yellow roof. The blue roof is west of A's house. Put the houses and roofs in the correct positions. Okay. Okay. Red, blue, and yellow. Okay, all right, all right. A lives west of B. Okay, A lives west of B. Let's just start with, with that for now. The red roof is east of the yellow roof. Red roof is east of the yellow roof. Uh, blue roof is west of A's house. Blue roof is west of A's house. Um, so it's like this. Blue roof is west of A's house. So C's here. And then red is to the east of yellow. Okay, so it's like, like this. Some puzzles must be met directly. There we go. A gentleman leaves no puzzle undone. Splendid, starting from the west. See, look, this gets an explanation. From the west is C's house, blue roof. Yeah, we I already explained it. Don't worry. Just listen to me. Don't listen to them. Six more to go. Oh, 55. That's a doozy. The water in the park fountain is fed through 13 valves. One day, A and B are cleaning the fountain and come up with the following game. Taking turns to open one valve or two adjacent valves at a time. Whoever opens the final spout will be the winner. After the coin toss, A starts and opens two valves. Can you help B win the game? Uh, wait, wait, wait. So if I click it, will it be a different color? Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, this is, hmm, okay. So let's see. Let's try and, this is a lot of, if there's a math way to do this, I'm not gonna do it that way. Well, what I was gonna do was like, like, okay, so if I did one, then he might do this, and then I could do this, and then he might do this, and I can, and then that's just gonna take a long time. Maybe there is an easier solution offered by the hints. Let's see. Is it going second? Try to work out how you can use it to your advantage. Nope, doesn't help me. To be sure of winning, there's only one choice for B's first move. Think about which valve. Obviously that's the case, or else that'd be, oh, stupid. The top valve is one. Then counting clockwise, open valve eight. After opening valve eight, take a look at the position of the valves. Do you notice anything? You should be able to spot a way to make sure B wins. Okay, this is probably useful. The top valve is one. If the top valve is one. Uh, no, 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 hold on. Then counting clockwise, open valve eight. Why is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, oh, give me a second to do some thinking in my head here. It's two. Uh, I didn't. All I did was try uh, doing it in my head because it doesn't really matter what they do because you know that depending on which one he chooses, he's either going to win or lose. And if he wins, he'll always win. So let's say red did twice and then we go with two for the next guy. Then it doesn't really matter, let's just say he does one, he does two, he does one, he does two. Keep going in this fashion. And then red stuck. And I'm sure if you did it the other way around, 
and he did two instead or something, and it was one, it would still work out. Let's go ahead and test it. Even though I don't have to test it, we might as well do it. Okay, so, he does two. Whoa, what a ballsy guy. Yeah, you're a ballsy guy. <laughs> and I'm sure there's plenty of other solutions that could be, but yeah, yeah, that, you got the case. Uh, two. Wait, what do you want me to do? How do you... Oh, you want me to... Okay, I see. Yeah, there you go. Wait, what do you want me to... I'm done. I've done it. What? Oh, I see. Oh, wait a minute. They can turn which... It doesn't go in order? Okay. This is interesting. What the heck? There we go. This took some creative thinking. I love the thrill of a good mm, solution. Because if you split up the board with that point they were talking about, what was it, like eight? Then it's not, it's five on each side. And since he had to go first, he would be the first one to run out no matter what. I see. Ah, okay. Mmm. Took me a few tries to figure that one out. The hotel owner, Joseph, has challenged the professor to a little game. There are 15 empty bottles on the counter. The player takes turn removing one, two, or three balls at a time. Whoever takes the last bottle loses the game. Blayton is going first. Can you help him win? I bet this is an even odd thing. Um, let's just try doing... One. Oh, I don't want to do the last one? Okay, let's do two. Oh, now he's doing two. Do I have to flip it on him now? Oh, wait, if I do one, there's four bottles left. So I'll... Oh, wait, I keep getting it backwards. I thought I, I keep forgetting that I don't want the last bottle. I could have won just there. Wait, no, wait, wait, no, I wouldn't have won. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, this is... okay. Wait, how many just... did he just take three? Okay, hold on. So let's see here. There are six bottles. Need to make sure it ends up with only one bottle left for him. So what is the smartest way to do this? Okay. I win. Some puzzles must be met directly. Aha! No puzzle is without an answer. Aha! It's important to take two bottles on your first turn. Then if you leave 13 bottles, then nine, then five, and then finally one bottle, you'll win. Ah, ha, ah, ah. ha! Yep, it is important if it's even or odd in the beginning, the way you choose it, I think. Emergency lighting. Even a fabulous chandelier isn't going to be much use in a blackout. Let's say you need to light a room during a blackout using only seven lamps. Each lamp will light the squares it's on, and one square on each side of it. Okay, how would you place seven lamps to light this entire room? Tap a square to place the lamp. This will light the squares in a cross pattern. The same can be lit by... The same square can be lit by two lamps? Same square... Oh, oh okay, okay, I see what you're saying. Alright. Hmm... Mmm... Uh... One, two, three, four, five, six, so, uh, okay. Hmm, I definitely think... Yeah, these spots... 
One, two, three. Maybe these spots are better. Is that possible? No, I like the corner pieces though. Oh, this is tricky. What is the best way to do this? There it is! Okay. This took some creative thinking. A gentleman leaves no puzzle undone. It kind of reminds me of that puzzle we did with the... Was it rats? No, wait. What was it, what was it with? It was like, it was guards, that were children or police, something like that. It was very similar to this puzzle. The warm glow of lamplight is quite nice to have every once in a while, isn't it? Oh, 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 oh. oh finally a 50 pointer, yes. Perfect. Starting with A and moving clockwise, the circle of people is arranged in the following order. Female, female, male, female, female, male, male. Hmm. Okay. Swap just two people to create a new arrangement where starting with A, you'll create the same male-female pattern, whether you count every person or every other person. Really? Every other per- What? What? Male... Wait, eight? That's a f Oh, the color's blue, okay. So, nah. Uh, so we need to do it. What if we do... It's male, wait. We need it to be male-female pattern, whether you count every person or every other person. Like, if this was- if this were- oh, wait, 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 okay. I don't have any moves left. I can only move things once? Oh, okay, uh... Hmm... I don't- I don't understand what they're talking about. They make it sound like you want it to be male, female, male, female, male, female, because it says, uh... What is it? Where does it say it? Uh, I just lost it. A male-female pattern. What same male-female pattern? If you look at the solution, which says you're supposed to swap these two, then it ends up being uh, female, 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 male, female, male, male. What does that even mean? I don't. What? I don't understand. This is. I don't understand what they're talking about. I don't know what they want me to do. I don't know why the solution is what it is. I don't know. I'm just gonna do it and call it. I don't. This is what I don't know. Come up with. Nonsense. Makes no sense to me. I don't understand so the entirety of the puzzle. You get the same male-female pattern counting every- What? what Same male-female pattern? I don't know what male-female same pattern- Are you saying... Male-male... What? Same as- Oh! See, now I get it. After like 20 minutes and looking at the solution 17 different times, I now understand that what they wanted was this a pattern that matches no matter... Okay. So every other and every fourth are three red, one blue, one red, two blue, but they're identical. Okay. God, that really just took way too long to sink into my head. I don't like it. I, I didn't... I don't... Maybe you guys, maybe when you read it, it was just instantaneous, you understood right away. Oh, so the pattern has to be the pattern for the third and fourth have to match. That's what it's supposed to be. Ugh. Ugh. That. Ugh. Ugh. Very upset. 60! Okay, we're upping it. Okay, we're upping the ante. Your lucky tablecloth is damaged and you want to salvage it. You must start- oh my god, I'm sweating from the frustration. I'm literally s just sweating right now because of how upset that last puzzle made me. Your lucky tablecloth is damaged, you want to salvage it, you must start by cutting off the shaded area. Shaded area, okay, it's a box. Mm. Next, you must make two straight cuts along the dotted lines and end up with three pieces. Sewing these pieces together will give you a smaller square tablecloth with five complete four-leaf clovers. Draw two lines on cloth, 
to show where you should make your cuts. Okay. Okay. Uh... Okay, gotcha. Alright. Let's see what we can do. So this... is gone. Let's, let's erase it. Which leaves... an almost complete four-leaf clover. Cutting along the lines. I'm sure it's not something simple as this, is it? Then you get all these... Mm, can you even make a square with these? You'd have a very bizarre shape. Certainly doesn't look like you'd be able to fit anything like that. Can you? Let us make a square from this? No. Can you make a square with this? Maybe, because this piece could fit where... Hmm... Okay, yet again. This is another puzzle I just simply couldn't visualize. I used up to the third hint, which just gives you the first line you need, which is, um... Uh, this line right here. But even with that one, I've been trying to see how I can get five full clovers. I've been trying to use, trying to visualize how to rearrange these squares into what I would need. I just, I couldn't, I, ca I can't see it. I couldn't see it, even with, because it, it wants you to do, it wants you to do this, and it wants you to do this. But, it's like, I'm trying to connect, from here I'm trying to see like, okay, uh, so where do these pieces form? These one pieces combined with this three piece and this one piece to make, like, ah, uh, I, I just, I, I couldn't see it. I, I couldn't see it. And no matter how long, there's only so much time you can stare at a puzzle. That was it. Trying to see what they're trying to show you and not, like, at a certain point you just don't, you, you can't figure it out. I guess unless someone were here, right here, standing right next to me going, no, you know, you see, it turns into this. I just, ugh. I, I couldn't see it. It's a bit smaller, but the new tablecloth looks fantastic, especially with the five four-leaf clovers. And since you salvaged it instead of throwing it out, I guess it's a lucky tablecloth after all. I just... Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, some piece... One of the pieces fits in. Like, I maybe the bottom right fits into that space with the top left, and then that would make one. But that's not even a, a sc I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Some of these are just way too difficult for me to solve. <sighs> Last one, though. Another 50, of course. My children have been very kind to each other lately, so I decided to give them some candy as a reward. I have four jars of candy, A, B, C, and D. The combined number of candies in jars A and B is equal to twice the number of- Oh my god! Can I go back and just do an easier one? Then, oh, uh, no. Oh no, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. Four jars of candy, A, B, C, and D. Combined number of candies in jars A and B is equal to twice the number of G in, in C. Oh, oh dear. Okay, this one was a bit of a doozy, but... Let's see if I can try and go through the steps here uh, as cleanly as possible, which is going to be difficult. So for one thing, you can tell that all of these end up becoming even numbers, because anything multiplied by an even number is even. So, okay, 2b is an even number, but if you look here before it, a plus 3, um, you'd have to add two odd numbers to get an even number, so you can conclude that a is odd. So you go back, and odd plus, and this is even again, so it means b is odd, because odd and odd equals even. So, a is odd, b is odd. So you put b back in here as an odd number, and it comes out as another even number. So, d is also odd, which means every number is odd, so the only jar left is c, and since it's six pieces of candy, it's the only even number there is, yes, it's c. Some puzzles must be met directly. No puzzle is without an answer. Oh, man. Oh, God. There you go. Yeah. 
Even number of sweets. Okay, all right. Now that we've got 80 puzzles, it should be absolutely fine. Let me go verify that that's the correct number we needed. Uh, we're running to... Uh, the guy in front of the factory. Let's just double check, and then I'm gonna end the video. Oh, there it is! Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this ridiculously long video of me just getting frustrated at so many of these damn puzzles. Well, finally we can get back to the story though, which is nice. So, stay tuned for the next one, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye!